Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this Soundbites module, entitled Ultrasound Guided Cannulation of Arm Veins Part 2, we'll look further into the techniques needed to use ultrasonography to guide a IV into one of the deep arm veins. As we discussed in part one of this module, we first want to map out the vein using both short and long axis views, and we'll employ a dynamic technique for optimal guidance of the catheter down to the vein. We want to use a longer angiocath for the procedure, preferably 1.88 inch or longer, as we need a good amount of the plastic catheter in the vein to avoid extravasation of fluids or meds during resuscitation of the patient. This recent published study showed that it's crucial to select the correct target vessel when deciding to cannulate a deep arm IV. 169 patients were enrolled in the study, and it was determined that the size of the vessel directly correlated with the success rate of the cannulation procedure. A vessel with a diameter less than 3 millimeters correlated to a success rate of only 56%, while a diameter greater than 6 millimeters correlated to success rate of 92%, thus showing that the diameter was directly correlating to the success rate of placement of a deep arm IV. Also, the depth of the vessel was very important as no vessel that was deeper than 1.6 centimeters was successfully cannulated. A very nice study by Dr. Pani Bianco et al. in Academic Emergency Medicine 2009. Armed with the knowledge of the last study, here we're going to measure the diameter of a brachial vein prior to a puncture attempt. Notice here we've selected a brachial vein, and we're measuring the diameter at 3.7 millimeters by 4.3 millimeters. The, thus, this would correlate with a low likelihood of success rate during a cannulation attempt. Notice also we're measuring the depth of the vessel, and while the depth of the vessel is 6 millimeters, less than the 1.6 centimeters that correlated to no successful outcomes of peripheral IV cannulation, the diameter of the vessel would be very difficult to cannulate. Now let's take a look at a better target. This is a basilic vessel, and we can see here that the diameter is much larger than the last brachial vein, and we measure it at 6.5 millimeters by 6.7 millimeters. Thus, this would have a very high success rate in terms of cannulation with an ultrasound-guided IV. We can also see that the vessel depth is relatively superficial, again, making it more amenable to a cannulation attempt. Once we've selected a favorable target vessel for cannulation, we can place the probe in a short axis or side-to-side -side orientation. Here we're using a Q-tip coming in underneath the probe at a 45 degree angle to look for the ring down artifact for guidance for placement of the IV in a side-to-side -side or lateral orientation on the patient's arm. We can look for a finding known as the ring down artifact on the ultrasound screen as shown here. Notice we have a nice plump basilic vein in the middle of the field here, and we can see a dark mark emanating from the surface directly down, which is the ring down artifact caused by pressure from the Q-tip. Thus, this would be the appropriate poke point on the side-to-side -side orientation on the patient's arm for placement of the IV. We can also localize a vessel using the long axis technique. Notice here we have the probe oriented in an up and down configuration on the patient's arm. And we're placing the Q-tip underneath the distal aspect again at a 45 degree angle to look for that ring down artifact onto the vessel. To increase the accuracy of an ultrasound guided IV, it's important to know the course of the vessel as it runs up and down the arm. Here we see in the picture to the left that we're localizing the vessel at one point on the patient's arm. But it's not enough to know only one point. We need to know the course of the vessel as it runs up and down the arm as shown in the picture here to the right. Notice we're marking two points on the vessel. We have the distal poke point as noted by the blue X towards the outer part of the patient's arm. And then we're moving the probe more up the arm more proximally to mark a second point on the vessel. A line drawn between these, these marks would identify the trajectory that the IV should follow once it comes in at the distal poke point to successfully cannulate the vessel. This longer angiocath at 1.88 inches would be more optimal for cannulation of a deep arm vein using ultrasound guidance. This schematic shows the reason that we need a longer angiocath when cannulating a deeper arm vein. While the vein may only be one centimeter deep to the skin, notice that the needle is not going directly down and comes in at about a 45 degree angle to cannulate the vessel. So we need a longer aspect of the needle just to make it down to the target vein. Plus we also need an ample amount of catheter to be within the vessel lumen to avoid extravasation of fluids or medications. For this reason, 1.88 inch or longer is essential for cannulation of a deep arm vein. 
Now we're ready to cannulate a vessel using ultrasound guidance. We'll begin using the short axis or side-to-side -side orientation of the probe with the probe marker oriented towards the left as we stand in front of the patient. This will correlate with the ultrasound screen indicator dot, which is towards the left of the screen. Generally, I want to go and place the IV at a 45 degree angle underneath the patient's skin, and then I'll place the probe over the area of the IV to guide the IV directly into the vein. This phantom shows why using this short axis technique can be an excellent starting point for guiding the IV directly down to the vein under ultrasound guidance. Here we can see a target vessel, and note we see the echogenic tip of the needle going through the anterior wall of the vessel and permeating into the vessel lumen. So the short axis technique is optimal for viewing lateral needle orientation across the patient's arm and guiding the IV directly down into the venous lumen. When using the short axis technique, one must keep in mind the effect of probe slice on visualization of the needle. Note here, the probe is positioned more proximally along the course of the needle, and even though the needle tip is securely within the vessel lumen, we're only visualizing the needle to be above the vessel. Notice the schematic view here towards the left, and we can see the probe is more proximal along the course of the needle, and the ultrasound view towards the right. And even though the tip of the needle is securely within the lumen of the vessel, we're only visualizing the needle above the vein and may get a false determination of where the tip of the needle is. Therefore, when using the short axis technique when cannulating a deep arm vessel, it's important to move the probe along the course of the vessel to stay in plane with the tip of the needle as you advance the needle under the skin and into the vessel lumen. Here we see we've moved the probe more distally along the course of the vessel, and now we're more in plane with the tip of the needle. We see the schematic view to the left and the ultrasound view towards the right showing successful cannulation of the vessel and the tip of the needle right within the vein lumen. This video clip shows successful cannulation of a brachial vein using the short axis technique. Notice here we see the vessel, and notice we see the echogenic tip of the needle coming down from the surface and permeating the anterior wall of the vessel, and there we can see the echogenic tip of the needle right within the vessel lumen. We can also use the long axis configuration for cannulation of a deep arm IV. Optimally, you want to place the probe in the configuration of the vessel as it runs up and down the patient's arm. By tradition, we want to have the probe marker oriented distal so that the distal aspect of the probe will line up to the left of the ultrasound screen as shown here. So distal on the screen will be to the left and proximal to the right. The IV would then enter underneath the probe at that 45 degree angle. While the short axis configuration gives a lot of information about side to side or lateral orientation of the needle, the long axis configuration gives a lot of information with regard to vertical needle depth. Here we see a needle coming from the left and permeating into the vein lumen. Notice here we can get an accurate determination of the optimal depth of the needle in relation to the venous lumen for cannulation of the vessel. Here's a real cannulation of a brachial vein in a long axis configuration. We see the vein stretching out in a long axis configuration as a tubular structure running from left to right along the screen, and we see the needle coming in from the left to the right, moving up and down, and cannulating within the venous lumen. So at this point, we're ready to thread the catheter. This video clip captures a long axis cannulation of a deep arm vein, and we can see the needle coming in from left to right, and we can see the needle tip permeating through the vessel lumen. Now we can see the actual threading of the plastic catheter. So again, we'll look at the needle coming in from left to right, and now we'll go ahead and freeze it so we can see the actual plastic catheter securely within the lumen of the vessel. And it's nice to visualize the catheter within the vessel lumen to ensure that there's enough catheter there to give a good amount of medications and fluids without extravasation of either of these liquids into the patient's arm. In conclusion, thanks for tuning in to this Sound Bites module going over part two of ultrasound guided cannulation of arm veins. Ultrasound guidance for peripheral IV insertion is an extremely helpful technique, and optimally you want to choose a target vessel greater than six millimeters in diameter and at a depth of less than 1.6 centimeters to optimize our cannulation success. We we'll want to also prick a longer catheter so we have enough needle and plastic catheter to get into these deep arm vessels. We use a combination of short and long axis views to dynamically guide the angiocath into the vein. And just bear with it, because there is a steep learning curve for these ultrasound guided IVs. So you'll get it with time, so don't give up and practice, practice, practice. So I hope to see you back in the future as Soundbites continues.